If you open up the newspapers, not only this week, it's almost impossible not to be confronted with cyber related issues. Cyber crime, cyber police, cyber attack, cyber war, cyber terrorism, cyber sex, cyber space. I'm taking part in the second Global Debate and Public Policy Challenge. I started participating in this forum because I was really interested in the topic, which is digital freedom. I'm not sure if Google reads every email or yes. Google has access to read every email. We are discussing whether there have to be some limits to uh, online freedom. Can the government uh, use mass surveillance techniques? What about privacy? Privacy was only really invented in 1890, something like that. And it's something that we all really internalize within our, our culture. You know? Is it even possible in, in this day and age to have privacy when we in, in fact share all of our lives on the internet? Countries and courts and people are finding it very hard to adapt the new technologies with the old understandings because before the very end of the 20th century your own home was pretty private whereas right now what you're doing on your computer seems to be more elusive it's not your own home it's sort of like cyberspace A very intense program. It's five days long. The participants are with each other from morning to evening, uh, intense discussions, debates, but also they get to meet with the leading figures in digital freedom. I'm not sort of lecturing something new, but as you do with my business background, I would say things like, well, give me a sort of feel about what's happening in the next five years. And they'd look at me and say, we haven't a clue what's going to happen in the next two years. We're going to go. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So things are happening so quickly, you know, and Moore's law is still appropriate. The debates that we're having here could not be more relevant today. And you do come down to a very deep level of what does it mean to be in an environment where knowledge is infinite? And how does a human being engage with that? I think having a public discussion about it is very important. From the 40, the top 12, then move on to the second round. The 12 students then have to present these uh, op-eds. And from that, the top five will become the winners of the GDPPC forum. I sincerely do not believe in censoring or blocking the internet. To me, it would be like putting a piece of tape over my mouth. I sometimes feel like I have a really romantic view of the internet, that it's kind of this wild west of ideas and creativity and free speech, but I'm not very optimistic that the internet that I know now is going to be the internet of the future. The internet is threatening. It's a powerful, powerful thing. It allows people to say things that the government doesn't want people to say. So the government is essentially put in a position where it is threatened. And so it's very easy for the governments to sell it. Look, trust us, it's for our own security that we're going to get spied on. What we must not forget is that the struggle for freedom started by the youth in South Africa resenting being dictated to. Policymakers largely just don't understand the internet. It's definitely a Generation Y thing. So, and I mean, you can't expect a 50-year-old or a 60-year-old sitting in Parliament to properly grasp the true fluid nature of the internet and how quickly it changes. Amandla Gawetu, we need to bring power back to the people. Academics, politicians always say that, you know, the future belongs to the youth. But there are not that many platforms, meaningful platforms, where they can really come together reflecting a world in which we live in. The students can provide a fresh perspective, a bold perspective to think the unthinkable. The basis of internet is free speech and freedom of expression, and that should be preserved. The internet is a wild, wild place, and you should not be allowed to roam free around the internet. Why do we need regulations when regulations are always behind of technological changes? Democracy entails being accountable as well. Hacktivists are not accountable. Anonymous is not accountable. It will be up to them to solve many of the problems that the previous generations have left them as inheritance, and it will be up to them to actually speak up, speak out, and offer genuine solutions to the mess that we have out there right now.